In this video, we're going to look at how to make a table and how to calculate summations in Excel 2016 for Mac. Now, let's look at the, uh, a little uh, story here. It's a story about five girls who all have names of places in France, and they these five girls are in this class that I uh, teach. They, they come up often in stories, and their names are uh, um, Brittany, Rochelle, Brie, Lauren, and Paris. And they, uh, they sit around talking about different things, and they especially like talking about what they uh, eat. Now, it turns out their favorite food is frozen burritos. And so what we have is we've got some information about the number of frozen burritos that they ate last week. Brittany and Rochelle ate one frozen burrito each last week. Brie had two, Lauren had three, and Paris had five. Now we want to answer some, some questions. We want to find the total number of burritos consumed, and that in our summation notation that probably your textbook uses, but you can't really use it on Excel because it's not Excel notation. It's this capital sigma of the X. That means all the X's added together. So that's we want to find the total number of burritos consumed and how to calculate that on uh, uh, Excel. And then we want to find the total number of corners that they consumed. Now each burrito has four corners on it and if you have much experience microwaving frozen burritos you know that that's often the source of problems. And these five girls have a hard time microwaving their burritos successfully, so they end up with a lot of hard corners. And we want to know how many hard corners there are. Since there are four corners on each burrito, and each girl has X burrito, we can say that we're looking for the sum of four X. And then the next question that we have is how many burritos can be bought next week? Because next week, they're having a two-for-one sale, plus there's a coupon in the mailer for a free burrito. So for the same budget, next week, each girl will be able to buy twice as many burritos as this week, plus they'll get one free. And in summation notation, this means the sum of 2x plus 1. Now, how can we go about this in uh, Excel? First thing we're going to do is we're going to make a table. So I'm going to start off with some table headings. So we're going to start off with the girl's name. Uh, so I'll just call that girl. And then we want to have, have a column for X's because we want to add up all the X's for the total number of burritos that they have. And we want the total number of corners for each girl and we want to add that up. So that's 4X. And then finally we want to have the the number of burritos that they're going to have uh, next week, and for each person that will be 2x, 2 for 1, plus 1, and those will be our columns. And then our rows, I'm going to put the girls' names. We've got Brittany, we've got Rochelle, we've got uh, Brie, we've got Lorraine, and we've got Paris, Paris. Now we can start filling in these columns, but there's a, a um, it's better to use an Excel table. And the way that you make an Excel table is if you have all the rows and columns labeled already, we can go to Insert, and then we can go to Table. And actually, oh, I didn't press enter for Paris yet, so now, now we've got that entered there. Now I click on any uh, anything that I want in that table there. So I click on Rochelle's name, I could have clicked on X. And I go to Insert, Table, and it'll say, oh, where is your table? table? Is it going from B10 to E15? And I'm saying yes. But also, I have headers. Those top rows there are my headers, or the table columns, so I'm going to check that. And then I click OK, and this makes a, a, a table that looks nice, but it'll also do things automatically for us that will make life a lot easier. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to enter in our data. And so Brittany ate one burrito, Rochelle had one burrito, Brie had two burritos, 
Lorraine had three burritos and Paris had uh, five burritos. And so we have those uh, um, there. Now we want to add up the total number of burritos. And that's what we're going to put on the bottom here. So I'm going to put in the word uh, total down here. And um, now notice how it made the, uh, um, it expanded the table. I don't want to expand it. I'm going to take that little bracket there and I'm going to pull it, whoops. I'm going to pull up that bracket so that that total's not in there. And you'll see why as we go on there. So I've got total. Now I want to get the sum of all the burritos. Now I could add those up in my mind, but a better way, especially if we have a lot of data, is to put an Excel command in there, equals, and then we want sum, S-U-M, meaning the adding them all together, and then open parentheses, and we want to go from C11 down to, so I'll do C11 dot dot C15, close parentheses, and so you can see the square around there has us um, uh, circled the numbers that we're going to add up there. And I'm going to click Enter, and it calculates for me the total number of uh, burritos that people have ate. So that's um, um, the total number of burritos consumed. Now there's an actually quite a few ways to get a summation in Excel. I could have done cell C11 plus C12 plus C13 all the way through C15. I could have also have used this uh, auto sum over here to automatically sum things up. But I, here, I use this command equals sum C11 to C15. Now the second part of the problem is we want to find the total number of cor corners consumed. So using the summation notation with the capital Greek letter sigma, it's the summation of 4x. We want to take all the burritos, times them by four, and then add that together to find out how many corners were messed up in the microwave. So the way that I'm going to do this here is I could calculate it by hand, but now I'm going to use an Excel command. I'm going to, uh, an Excel equation. So I'm going to type in equals four, and then I put a star for times, and then I'm going to put in the cell address C11. And so that highlighted cell C11. And now when I click Enter, it'll give me that answer. But look at that. It also filled in everything else for the cells. It gave me 4x for each of everything else based on what the cell just to the left of it. And so that's the number of corners that everybody ate. Now, if I want the total, I could type in like I did here, equals sum and those numbers. But in Excel, I can also just drag, I highlight this cell, and it's got this little green square on it, that's called a handle, and I can drag the handle over, and it'll drag the formula over for the new column. So now it says equals sum D11 to D15. So it's going to be adding together the D11 to D15 column to get the total. So the total number of corners they had is 48. Now the third part of the question is how many burritos can be bought when there's a two to one special going on plus everybody gets one free burrito. So everybody will get twice as many burritos as last week plus one free burrito and then we want to add those all together. So what we do is we go over to our column. I'm going to put an Excel equation in this cell where I want to calculate that. And I'll put equals two star. And then our X is in the cell C11. So I'll put C11. And then I'll add one to it, plus one. And that'll calculate it for Brittany. But then I calculate it for everybody. And we get 3, 3, 5, 7, and 11 uh, burritos next week. Paris is going to have a good time. She's going to get 11 frozen burritos next week for the, for the same budget that she had this week for it. So how many total frozen burritos will the girls eat next week? We can drag this cell over again. I highlight it. 
take the handle and then I click and drag that handle over there and they'll have a total of 29 burritos next week. So we've looked at how to make a table in Excel and how to do summations. And we'll see that in statistics, these summations, we're doing them constantly. We're always taking people's data and then doing some function with it and then adding it all together. And that way we can take a lot of data and reduce it down to a small amount of data, but we take into consideration every piece of data that we have. So that's why we'll be doing summations all the way through the stats class. Now, at Azusa Pacific University, we're a Christian university, and we like to make a link between the material we're studying and some biblical concepts. So this passage uh, uh, made me think of a passage, that, well, let me make it a little bigger so that everybody can read it. Um, the, the biblical theme of the importance of valuing everybody especially if you're in a, a Christian community, if you're in a, um, a, a church that wants to follow Jesus Christ, it's absolutely essential that everybody has the same value. Um, the, uh, the Apostle Paul said, uh, in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. So these were the kind of like the social classes that they had uh, back in the, the Roman times. We don't classify people like that, especially anymore. We, we can. Um, but Christ was saying everybody has equal value in his kingdom. Um, as Christians, we need to view everybody as equally important. We can't say that, oh, that person's rich, they're better, that person's intelligent, they're better, but every person has the exact same value.